moment. I'm Professor of Environmental Science at the University of York and um, I've come through uh, insect ecology, through to marine ecology and now working on landscapes and I'm lucky enough to be the director of a NERC program called Biodiversity and Ecosystem Service Sustainability. Um, my name is Kat Morrison, I work at the British Trust for Ornithology and um, I'm a research ecologist there. I'm Bill Sutherland, hold the Miriam Rothschild Chair in Conservation Biology at the University of Cambridge. I'm uh, Jonathan Green, I'm a lecturer in Marine Biology at the University of Liverpool. My name is Ken Thompson, I'm, I'm more or less semi-retired now, um, but I've spent most of my life as an academic, at, mostly at Sheffield University, although a few of the universities as well, um, as a plant ecologist. And now I do a whole bunch of things. I write books on popular science related to ecology and on gardening. I write gardening science journalism for the Daily Telegraph. I'm still involved in a few research projects um, in a small way. Um, I edit a couple of journals, including one of them for the British Ecological Society. My name is Claire Wansbury. I'm an ecologist. I'm currently an associate director with Atkins, which is a large environment and engineering consultancy. Yeah. The best thing about my job is the um, ultimate freedom that you have as an academic. So there's nobody directing what you do and that means you can do proper evidence-based research and uh, as a result of that, when people look at your research, it has a certain authority. Um, the best thing about my job is the range of projects I get to work on. So um, this year I've been working on a project looking at um, the timing of moles across lots of different bird species. I've also been looking at the effects of climate change on one particular different uh, species. And I've also been building population models um, to really look at the influence of demography on population change across, um, again, lots of different species. So I get to work on a wide variety of short-term projects. I think it's the best thing about my job. I've always loved the outdoors. I love working outside in the field. And even in my role now, I have flexibility to still do field work, to get involved with our research projects uh, close to home in Wales, in the Channel Islands, and further afield sometimes as well. Um, I've always enjoyed field work, and, and that's what really got me into this, this subject. Uh, and then now I get to do field work with, with undergraduates as well. So we go on our field courses to, to Wales and to Scotland, and, and helping them, teaching with them, working with them in the field is really exciting as well. I think the best thing about my job is when you look at a site where there's been some amazing habitat creation actually within a development site, and you can see how much benefit there's been. I also enjoy the problem solving part of the job, where a client comes with a challenge and you help them work out how to do what's right for them and what's right for the wildlife. Being able to make a difference. So seeing our work being implemented and making a difference on the ground, which is fantastically satisfying. One is that I'm very much my own boss now. So everything I do, I enjoy doing. Uh, and I can do it all when I feel like it and stop doing it when I don't feel like it and do it all absolutely uh, at my own pace. And the other thing is that after a lifetime of, of being an academic and of sort of soaking up plants and science and ecology, um, I'm kind of in a position now to sort of digest that all that information and sort of pass it on to uh, to a sort of lay audience in a, in, a, in a, I hope, reasonably understandable form. Think ahead, try and develop your own ideas where possible, think about what interests you, what you want to try and study and what you want to find out about and then that's the, perhaps the most important thing, it's also the most difficult thing. And you can do that to an extent by studying what you enjoy, what you find the most challenging and interesting. It may be the thing that you find easiest. 
And the fact is you're probably finding it easy because you're good at it. So you should follow the stuff that you enjoy doing and that you find fun and challenging and interesting. Um, and then on top of that, gain experience outside your studies as much as you can, whenever you can, wherever you can, with whomsoever you can. Um, approach people directly with what it is you want to do with them. Don't send general speculative inquiries. They're too easy to ignore. Think about what you want to do next. Think about how volunteering or helping someone will aid you in getting there. Uh, and then go and ask if you can do that with, with another person or another group. Certainly have a look at the BES website and also SIEM, which is C-I-E-E-M.net. And both of those have careers advice in there. Try and get some experience, that's really important. But as well as having the experience, that also gives you a try to see, is this something you actually enjoy? Is this what you want to do as a career? Because you need the, that chance to see, is this right for me? And then you find out, basically, you do the job if it's right. And if it isn't interesting enough, you won't stick at it. So getting that experience early will help you work that out. I think the best advice is to learn about natural history, to get some field guides, go and learn how to identify plants, identify birds, insects, perhaps attend some courses and really get to understand basic natural history. It makes a huge amount of difference. Furthermore, I think if you can get the opportunity and publish something, then when you're looking for a job that makes a huge amount of difference. Even if it's something in your student newspaper or for an article for a wildlife magazine or something, if you can show that you can write, then, then that opens lots of doors. On the journalism front uh, and book writing front, I have to say that I've got into that very much by accident, really. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that 20 years ago I would have said that was part of a, of a plan that I had in mind at all, frankly. Um, and I think the way into that is two things. One is to do something else first so that you have something, some subject, where you actually do know what you're talking about. And the other thing is, I think, I would, I would research the area you want to get into and then I wouldn't be too ambitious. I would, you know, <coughs> don't worry about starting at the bottom. I mean, when I started writing stuff for some of Britain's least successful gardening magazines, being paid £25 a time, you know, it really didn't seem like a very useful way of spending my time. But it's got, it's got more interesting and more lucrative um, as, as time has gone on. Don't give up. I think you've got to be tenacious. Um, I went through the same period that you're going through now in the 1980s when things looked pretty rough and there wasn't much money around and everybody told me just hang in there Dave and if you really believe in yourself and what you're doing you'll get there and through luck I'm here. Just to try and get as much as practical experience as possible. So during your undergrad, join some local conservation organisations, get out there, find out what's going on in your local area and get involved because you'll not only get the practical experience but you'll also make the contacts necessary to kind of proceed in um, your career. Um, I know it's not always easy so also one piece of advice would just to be determined about it. Keep going, keep banging on people's doors and um, trying to um, build that network. I think within the SIEM website, as well as the careers advice, there's also a directory of consultancies. So you can look and see is there somewhere near to you you could get work experience. But also look at things in the voluntary sector, the wildlife trusts. There's a lot of people out there. And again, it may be ecology is where you want to be, but maybe not consultancy. So look around and talk to people. Best place is the network around you, and if you're a current student, that will be your, your colleagues, your peers, your fellow students, it'll be students in the year above you, um, it'll be the PhD students who demonstrate to you and who you may see uh, on field courses or, or in the lab, and your tutors, your project supervisor, and the staff in the university that, that you are studying in or have studied with if, you, if you're a graduate. Um, 
they know the most. The chances are that they have taken the path that, that you're interested in taking, and they'll be able to help you. More widely, our society, the VES, they've got a lot of information, and then there are smaller groups, depending on your interest, Freshwater Biology Association, Tropical Biological Association, uh, Marine Biological Association, depending on your particular area of interest. The way into academic life, if you're an undergraduate now, is, is via a PhD. Um, and if you're looking for a PhD, I would, I would, well, first of all, I would say don't do that unless you're really interested or really passionate about something. Don't just do it because it's something you think you ought to, or worse still, it's something someone else thinks you ought to. But if you're really interested in something, research that subject. Find out who are the interesting people in that subject. Find out where the interesting work is taking place. And then just email these people or ring them up and go and introduce yourself and talk to them. So things like Twitter have a lot of um, posts coming up on them and websites like environmental jobs. Um, I know all the jobs from the BTO are advertised on there, so um, yeah, just things like that. So most of the learned societies operate web pages or, or even have offices um, who will supply you with this kind of information. So the British Ecological Society is a good place to start, uh, the Royal Society is another one, and there are many marine conservation, uh, the many marine societies like the Marine Conservation Society, Marine Biological Association and so on, and they will all help you uh, on your first steps in your career. Mm -hmm.